Alright guys, welcome to another cold paint tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how to paint a Tau Vior La crisis suit. Here's a quick shot of what he looks like at the end of the project. And before we start, here's a list of all the paints that I used across painting this crisis suit. Okay guys, here we have the crisis suit primed uh, using Vallejo's gray primer. I'm going to go in and cover everything that I want to be white using Vallejo model color deck tan. Um, a little bit different than the other tutorials that you guys saw me do in which I'm just going to establish a base color here and then shade it afterwards instead of starting with a darker color and then bringing it up. Okay, so the deck tan was our main color. Here we're going to go ahead and start applying a bit of uh, shadows uh, with a one-to-one -one mix of German camo beige and neutral gray, both from Vallejo model color. I don't like shading white with plain gray. I think it's a little bit boring, so I mixed in a bit of a, a beigeish color just to to warmthen, uh, warm in the tone, if that's even a word. Uh, I'm going to go with warmthen. Okay guys, so the shadows are down. I'm gonna go in with our first highlight here. Um, it's Vallejo model color Ivory. It's very, very close to white, but not pure white, and it'll allow us to brighten it up one more time. I think it's important to take the time here and just, just talk about the colors and, and why we would do things in a specific way. You wouldn't want to go go straight to white or just use white in this case because it's hard to see depth and, uh, and contours. Um, a good example for this, if you guys are ever um, trying to figure out what kind of colors you want to paint or how you want things to look, take a look at how things look like on cars. Um, and that's really what we're trying to, to replicate in terms of a miniature. The only difference is a car being full size. Um, true light can go ahead and show us different things than we can on like this scale. Okay, so the ivory is all laid out, and if you guys really wanted to, you could probably leave the model off right where it was, um, if that's as bright as you want to go. Uh, in this case, I do like to go straight up to white for the absolute brightest points, I'm being very specific, so uh, paint's pretty thin down, um, working with uh, a, a moderate PSI, uh, probably like 1.8 to 2, just to make sure I can be very specific on where I'm trying to bring up those brightest points. Uh, once again, going back to the point that I said with the, with the car, try to figure out where light would be hitting uh, in order to determine where you want to have those brightest points. Um, fun side note as well, uh, all the paints that I just used for the white come in actually a box set for black and white that Vallejo did, so if you guys are looking for an easy way to pick up all those colors, you can go ahead and do that. I'm not endorsed by Vallejo in any way, I just think it's a really good kit, uh, a really good box set, if you're looking to enhance your uh, black and white painting skills. Okay guys, um, so the uh, white's all done, I'm going to go in with Vallejo's um, model color German Grey here um, to hit all the areas that I want to be a, a darker color or, or light black in this case. Um, there is a lot to do on these crisis suits in this color scheme, um, so you have all the inside of the legs, you have the jetpacks, you have um, potentially guns, alt panels on their legs or shoulders. So. I'm going to end up cutting it off a little bit short because it gets kind of boring um, just to watch uh, me black out all these things, but we're going to come right back uh, to see what everything looks like.
So here it is with the black all done. Okay, so when painting these guys and painting Tao, I find that there's two areas that you need to be just extremely patient with. One is trying to black out all the areas that you want to be um, not your base color, and that's, that's including in like this like, more white and red scheme, or even the classic browns that, uh, that the Tao have. Um, usually you'd have uh, black uh, as being that, that gear component. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go in with a, a fine brush um, so a longer bristle brush, but still very, very fine, good point. And I'm going to line out every one of these grooves um, with Agrax Earthshade. The reason I use Agrax is just, um, it was what I was using for some of my other tile that I've been painting. So I painted up one of the, the new Ghost Keels and the new Commander, and I thought that it looked okay. You can use any kind of color that you want here to break up those shades, um, uh, just to change things out a little bit. Nice, get some good definition going along here. Um, it's good uh, when combined with airbrushing because you don't necessarily need to go out and edge highlight everything again afterwards because the airbrush gave us a lot of that zenithal highlighting that you can see across the miniature right now. And what this um, very fine line that we're using is just going to pop out a lot of those plates. So the key here is just a steady hand uh, and a fine brush. Make sure the paint is not going to dry too much on your brush and keep on moving and re-wetting it. Um, I'm going to fade the black um, and then we're going to take a look at what this looks like at the beginning of the next clip once it's all completed. Okay guys, so here we go. Um, that's what it looks like after all the lining's done. Uh, now here, uh, and you may have noticed at the end of the blacking out step that I hit some of the panels uh, with that German Grey, I'm going to go out and base coat those additional panels um, using uh, Citadel's Mechanicus Standard Grey. It is a nice mid-tone cold grey that I'm going to use as the, the alternate panel color for uh, this tower me. Okay, for whatever reason, um, I decided to, to step away from doing and finishing out those panels. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go in with pure white uh, to highlight all those, those darker areas uh, for the creases and the joins. So um, it is just a way to highlight black. Uh, I'm just fading it in uh, very gradually. I'm going to end up hitting it with a wash afterwards just to, to tone it down a little bit. Alright, you may be thinking, why was there a bunch of yellow goo across the miniature right now? Uh, that's because I'm using Silly Putty as a masking fluid, just to make sure I didn't get any overspray onto the primary helmet when doing that front panel. Um, I'm going into all of those areas that I hit with uh, Mechanicus Standard Grey with Vallejo Game Colors Wolf Grey. Uh, Wolf Grey is a pretty cold grey, um, it's not a very, very warm color, so it actually contrasts uh, nicely with the uh, white that we painted on before. 
um, and all those steps that we did to paint on the, that white before while still acting as a good highlight for those alternate panels. In this step, we're going to use Nuln Oil just to tone down those uh, white highlights that we painted on all of the leg supports behind the armor um, and any other uh, black areas that we were going to go with. Um, I'll use Nuln Oil a little bit later as well, apologies for just being off screen here too, um, to shade some of the metallic places. I can't remember exactly if I had that uh, on camera or not, uh, but you'll see that come back in at least one more time. Okay, we're going to go and get uh, the antennas on this guy done, as well as I think the missile uh, tips of the missile pods as well, using the fist in red. It's an awesome, very, very opaque, mid-range red tone that we can use uh, in order to work up highlights onto it later. Okay, so I'm a little bit off screen right now, but it'll come up again in a little bit. Uh, I'm going to hit all that red area with uh, Citadel Drukai Violet. Um, I like shading reds with purples uh, on the color spectrum. They're very close. They're, one's just a little bit deeper than the other. Um, I'm even going to go ahead and get the, the missile pods here too, um, just to give a little bit of uh, color shift on the, the ends of the missiles there. All right, so the model's looking more and more complete in each one of these steps. I'm going to highlight those antennas. I'm going to mask off each one individually. You're only going to see me doing one here uh, because it'd be kind of boring just to, to do it twice. Um, I'm going to highlight it with the airbrush using Vallejo Model Colors Scarlet, um, like I usually do with reds, and it looks pretty good. I'm going to hit uh, Scarlet on the end of those missile pods as well. Okay guys, a um, bit of a talk here, uh, as well as a step. Um, I'm going to start putting on uh, Vallejo Model Air's Light Sea Blue around any place that I want to be a lens. I'm trying to create a very subtle shift in color to show some object source lighting, or OSL. There's the very, very easy way to go overboard doing OSL um, with an airbrush. Uh, I am entirely guilty of it when I first got my airbrush. All I could think about is making everything glow as much as I could. Um, and for some miniatures, that's okay. For me, I'm kind of toning it back now, just on a personal level, um, to try to like refine some skills that I haven't used in a while, such as painting gems, painting lenses, and things like that. So, um, to each their own, but you're going to see us go through uh, painting all these lenses uh, across the miniature after applying the light sea blue uh, for our OSL effect.
Okay guys, um, another small chat here as I'm going to go in and start base coating all of those lenses with uh, Privateer Press's P3 Coal Black. Um, one thing that I found, um, especially when painting lenses and, and going across and trying to keep uh, paint both workable and then not, um, letting it dry out on your palette is to use a wet palette and in this case all I do is use a Ferrero Rocher lid, uh, some foam uh, covered in water, and then some wax paper on top of that. Now that lets me just keep this uh, paint still hydrated so I can keep on working with it. So across this whole lens section I'm going to be adding in a few different colors to coal black and then eventually removing the coal black and then just using other colors in order to create the the, 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 the gem effect that I'm going for. So in this case, uh, you'll see me using coal black as well as uh, Vallejo game colors Hawk Turquoise and then Vallejo model color white. Okay guys, so when painting lenses you want to basically highlight to the bottom right hand corner, at least that's the way that I do it. If you're left handed you may go to bottom left hand to make it feel more natural to you, but I'm right handed, I paint to the bottom right hand corner of the gem, or lens, or whatever it's supposed to be. In this case I'm adding in small amounts of Vallejo Game Colors uh, Hawk Turquoise back to that coal black uh, to start creating some highlights. And basically I'm going to be just mixing just a little bit more hawk turquoise and a little bit more hawk turquoise until I figure out what I want it to be. So here you can see that I'm starting to get a little bit of a, of a brighter tone being put into it. And then eventually I'll be adding just hawk turquoise uh, with a little bit of white added into it for that last edge. Apologies for the fantastic shot of my head right here. Uh, got right over top of the model and it uh, um, kind of focused in on my, my noggin. Okay, so um, even more brightness on the, the brush right now. You can see that it's very, very thin brush, same kind of brush that I use for lining out all the, the armor panels. A um, bit off screen, but fix it. Um, but it seems to be that the missile pod's in the way. Um, but here, we're just hitting that, that bottom right edge um, with this mix. Um, note that we still left that top left corner very, very dark. So what's going to happen is, we're actually going to go in there with just pure white paint, paint a few dots in it, just to create uh, the effect of uh, light reflecting or refracting inside that, that lens. All right, now we're in the home stretch to finish this guy off. I'm gonna go in with uh, a gold mix. My gold mix is a 50-50 mix between Vallejo Model Airs Steel and Vallejo Game Colors Glorious Gold. I love this mix. It makes it nice and bright and allows us to uh, to shade and highlight it a little bit better than using this pure Glorious Gold. Um, so I'm gonna hit the weird big half orb things along the jetpack, uh, some joins on the knees, some joins on the elbows, and then call it a day for this gold.
Okay, gonna hit all those gold areas with a wash of Seraphim Sepia. If you're using this gold mix, I highly suggest be patient, let the sepia dry, and then hit it again. It looks fantastic with two layers of sepia on top. Okay hey guys, all that would be left to be done after that is to throw in the transfers, uh, hit them with a varnish, uh, and then uh, make sure that you go out and pick all of those lenses out with a gloss coat, and this is what you're going to get uh, done with once you finish off your base. Okay folks, thank you very much for watching this tutorial on how to paint a Vior La Crisis suit for the Tau Empire Faction Warhammer 40k. If you've enjoyed this video, um, please give it a thumb up or like it, uh, share and subscribe to the channel. It helps me out a whole bunch. Um, put a comment down below if you guys uh, want to request additional tutorials coming out. Also, let you know that I do uh, take com painting commissions. Um, please drop me a line through YouTube or on Facebook in the link below, um, and I would love to set up a project for you. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, thank you once again for watching, and have a great day.